commander of the AFC is central. First, let me thank uh, General Lori Robinson, who leads NORAD, and the entire team here at uh, Elmendorf Air Force Base. Elmendorf and Fort Greeley, other facilities across Alaska, represent uh, the bulwark of our missile defense in the United States, and I'm very grateful uh, for the leadership that uh, the General provides here, along with her senior team. Uh, also great to be joined by uh, Governor Walker. Uh, the great partnership uh, between the Alaska National Guard uh, and the military here at Elmendorf contributes to the safety and security of the American people every day. Uh, at a time of uh, increased provocations uh, and uh, threats of uh, ballistic missiles from the rogue regime in North Korea, uh, the work done here at Elmendorf uh, with missile defense command as well as NORAD is more important than ever. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleased to reflect today with the senior leadership here uh, on the progress that uh, uh, the President Trump and our administration secured last year an additional $5 billion in missile defense funding over and above existing appropriations uh, and also the provision of, uh, of 20 additional ballistic missile interceptors that will be added to the, uh, the resources that are already on the ground here. Missile defense begins here in Alaska. Uh, and the American people and the world should know uh, that our nation uh, is secure. Uh, our, our nation's uh, defenses from potential inbound missile attacks is the best in the world. And it's because of the extraordinary personnel here, the extraordinary partnership with the state uh, of Alaska, and the ongoing commitment of the American people. What I told uh, General Robinson uh, today and the whole senior team is that this commander in chief has their back. Uh, and our nuclear posture review uh, reflects on the, the vital importance of modernizing our nuclear forces. Uh, and missile defense is part and parcel of, of what President Trump is committed to doing uh, to make the strongest military force in the world a stronger still. So as I prepare, uh, to travel uh, to the Indo-Pacific, uh, traveling uh, tomorrow to Japan, and then on to South Korea. Uh, uh, I thought it was altogether fitting uh, to begin here uh, at Elmendorf, uh, the, uh, the first line of defense uh, for the American people uh, in missile defense, uh, to have an opportunity to be briefed in real time uh, on the work that's done here, but also, uh, most importantly, to extend the gratitude of the American people to all of the men and women uh, who, who staff and, and operate all, all of this, these extraordinary facilities and aircraft that keep our mission safe. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to speak. Mr. Vice President, I'll be flattered to see you. Thank you. Um, today in Peru, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was asked about whether there might be any talks with the U.S. delegation um, and the North Korean delegation. And this morning, we were told by the White House, no, Secretary Tillerson said, We'll see. He was not really non-committal. I mean, he's favored diplomacy. Um, there has been a relative period of calm from North Korea that this administration has been looking for. Do you envision any communication with North Korea, even if not yourself, on this trip? And if not, how do you see this kind of, um, you know, North Korea coming to uh, the Olympics and this relative period of calm moving diplomacy forward? Thank you. Well, first and foremost, President Trump, uh, asked me to travel to the region for several reasons. Number one, to strengthen the relationship between the United States and our allies in Japan and South Korea. Uh, we'll be meeting in the coming days uh, with Prime Minister Abe and with President Moon, and we'll be talking about the strength of our alliance 
uh, and I look forward to, to reinforcing the important priority that President Trump and the United States places on the relationship with these two nations. A second, uh, we'll collectively be reiterating our commitment uh, between the United States, Japan, South Korea, and a broad range of allies and partners around the world to continue to isolate North Korea economically and diplomatically until they abandon their nuclear and ballistic missile ambitions. Now, all options are on the table, uh, but we will reiterate this week standing beside Prime Minister Abe, standing beside President Moon. The solidarity of all these nations and nations around the world to continue to bring maximum pressure on an increasing basis on the rogue regime in North Korea and to achieve the global objective of a denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Uh, lastly, I'm traveling to the Olympics with my wife and with our delegation certainly to cheer on American athletes, uh, but also, quite frankly, uh, we're traveling to the Olympics to uh, make sure that North Korea doesn't use the powerful symbolism in the backdrop uh, of the Winter Olympics uh, to paper over uh, the, the truth about their regime, a regime that oppresses its own people, a regime that threatens nations around the world, a regime that continues its headlong rush to develop nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles and use those to, to threaten its neighbors and even threaten the United States of America. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be telling the truth about North Korea at every stop. Uh, we'll be ensuring that, that whatever, uh, whatever co cooperation that's existing between North and South Korea today on Olympic teams does not cloud the reality uh, of a, a regime that must continue to be isolated by the world community, uh, and and the, and it must be brought to a place where it ends its provocations, it ends its development and possession of nuclear weapons and ballistic missile weapons. Uh, with regard to any interaction uh, with the North Korean delegation, uh, I have not requested a meeting, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Are you President are you Trump saying is, that uh, if an opportunity presented itself, sir? that you might avail yourself to at least greet any North Korean official that's there? Well, let me, let me say President Trump has said he, he always believes in talking, uh, but I haven't requested any meeting, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but my message, whatever the setting, whoever's present, will be the same. And that is that North Korea must, once and for all, abandon its nuclear weapons program and ballistic missile ambitions and it must accede to the wishes not only of nations across the region in the United States, but nations across the world to really ab abandon those ambitions and enter the family of nations. North Korea can have a better future than the militaristic path, path of provocation and confrontation that it's on, better for its own people, better for the region, and better for peace. Yeah, one down in front. Uh, Rebecca Paltrow, Channel 2. We always hear that Alaska is the forefront of defense in North Korea, do you think that's accurate and are we prepared for something like that? Uh, Alaska is the home of missile defense for all intents and purposes in the United States, particularly with regard uh, to the rogue regime in North Korea. Um, and Alaska is ready and America is ready. But I'm very pleased to, to report that, that as a result of President Trump's leadership and strong support in the Congress, we've added an additional $5 billion over current appropriations for additional missile defense right here in Alaska, additional 20 uh, missile interceptors that will be on the ground. Uh, we're going to continue to support the mission here at Elmendorf. We're going to continue to support the mission at Fort Greeley and, and all over Alaska. Uh, NORTHCOM, NORAD, our missile defense forces here are vital to our national defense, and the world should know that they're ready. Are you seeing any indications at this time of where it seems there may, there may be a cooling off or some sort of uh, rapprochement between the North and the South? Are you seeing any indications of any provocations from the North uh, around the games? And if, if not, why not? Well, we know that uh, the North is planning a major military parade, I think the day before the Olympic Games, uh, which uh, sends a very different message uh, than uh, the message of cooperation and friendship that they're projecting to much of the world. Uh, I'll be visiting uh, with our forces uh, in Japan. I'm here at Elmendorf Air Force Base, and uh, 
Uh, we're simply going to communicate uh, a message of American strength and a message of American resolve. Uh, and not just American resolve. But as I travel throughout the region, uh, in Japan and in South Korea, we will be, we will be expressing the resolve of nations, allies, partners across the region and across the world. But the time has come for North Korea to once and for all abandon its nuclear and ballistic missile ambitions, to set aside those programs and embrace a better future. It is, a, uh, it is an urgent message. It's a message that I'll be delivering uh, in every setting that I've given an opportunity. And the world needs to hear again and again the truth about what North Korea is today, uh, the oppression of its people, the disregard of human rights, the threats and provocations across the region and across the world that, that come from its nuclear and ballistic missile ambition. But uh, the world also needs to hear that, uh, that if they will choose a different path, uh, there's a better future for the people of North Korea and, and the, the people of the Korean Peninsula with a nuclear free future. One All question, right, on, the, one question yeah. on the stock market. Quick, very quick. President Trump frequently tells the success of the stock market as a sign of his own administration's success. As basically you saw today, the market dropped by nearly 1,200 points. What should the American public read into that it was generally, and then also what it says, if anything, about the Trump administration? Well, we couldn't be more proud of the fact that, uh, that the stock market has increased by thousands of points since Election Day in 2016. Uh, but, uh, but today's sell-off uh, represents uh, what is very likely simply the ebb and flow of our stock markets. And we recognize that. The, the most important numbers to focus on are the fundamentals. And the fundamentals of this economy continue to be very strong. In the last jobs report, 200,000 more jobs created. Unemployment at a 17-year low. Uh, probably the most encouraging number uh, for me as a former governor that watched uh, how stubborn the wage number is in this country, is seeing wages rise by 2.9 percent in the most recent report should give every American that this economy is on the move and they can be confident that the president is going to continue to advance the kind of policies, rolling back excessive taxes, regulations, freeing up access to American energy like Anwar here in Alaska that are going to continue to contribute to that very real momentum that is obvious in the fundamentals of our economy.